Here's a picture from a lovely website, thispersondoesnotexist.com. As the name of the website suggests, this is a fake person generated by a computer. It's a random generator and it gives a different face each time you run it. In the language of this course, the face is a random variable, i.e. a probability model. And what's behind this sort of website is a probability modeling question. Given a data set x1 up to xn, can we design a probability model that might have generated it? In this case, given a data set of real images of faces, can we invent a good probability model and fit it to the data set? This is called generative modeling for the obvious reason that it's about implementing a random variable generator. Let's state the overall approach more abstractly. First step, choose a distribution with tunable parameters. Let's call it X, capital X. We want our data set little x1 up to little xn to look like independent samples drawn from the distribution big X. We write out the likelihood of the data set. The likelihood of the entire data set is just the product of the terms product of the likelihoods of each of the individual items in the data set because we're assuming independence. And then we fit this model using maximum likelihood estimation and that gives us an estimate for theta and that is our fitted probability model. Now I told a white lie earlier. The face did come from a probability model on that website, this face does not exist.com, but the fitting they used didn't actually use maximum likelihood estimation. It used a different method called adversarial fitting. This course will actually cover how to generate images using maximum likelihood estimation, but it turns out to be very tricky to get good quality images and the exact mathematical relationship between adversarial fitting and MLE is still an open research question. So let's start off with a much simpler version of generative modeling where all the maths comes out nice and easy. Exercise. Given a numerical data set x1 up to xn, that just means x1 up to xn are all numbers, fit a normal of mu sigma squared distribution where mu and sigma are unknown parameters. First, We'll write out the likelihood for a single observation little x. If our random variable model is normal of mu sigma squared, if we imagine little x is drawn from that distribution, then the likelihood function for little x is the standard formula from a normal density function, which you should uh, remember and learn off by heart. Next, the log likelihood of the entire data set the log likelihood of the entire data set is sum of the log of the likelihood of each individual observation. We should just note down here the assumption of independence. It wasn't stated in the question that all the x's are independent. It's a choice that we made as modelers, so we ought to write it down in our answer. Copying out the likelihood function for an individual observation, we end up with this term here. I often see students who copy out the formula they wrote in the first line, literally, and they don't stick on the subscript I. Don't do that. <laughs> if it looks like you're just copying a formula without thinking about what it means, that's a very bad thing to be doing. Next, we want to fit the model. In other words, find the maximum likelihood estimates. This is a two parameter problem, so we'll differentiate the likelihood with respect to both of the parameters. If I differentiate with respect to mu, set that derivative equal to zero. Differentiate with respect to sigma, set that derivative equal to zero. Gives me these two equations. I have two simultaneous equations. And when I solve those equations together, I get this answer mu hat is the one and n sum of the xi's, the average of the data set, and sigma hat is the square root of one and n sum of xi minus mu hat squared.
OK, now let's go on to a more complicated example. This is the example we looked at in the very first video of this course. Here is a probability model for MP expense claims. Fit it to the data. And the question gives us the code for a probability model. First thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to do what the question says. I'm not going to fit the claim data. I'm going to fit the log claim data. It's what I'm plotting in the histogram. It's how my code generates its output and it just makes the maths easier. Formally, I'm going to fit y, random variable big Y, to the data set log of x1 up to log of xn, where the xi's are the claim amounts. This is exactly the same thing as fitting 10 to the power of y to x1, x2, and so on. It's not hard to prove that fitting y to log claim data gives me exactly the same answer as fitting x to the original claim data. It's just some basic chain rule stuff from calculus, and it's not worth even thinking about it. If machine learning depended on the units in which we fed in the data, it would be crazy. We couldn't get anywhere. OK, now, to fit a generative model using maximum likelihood, we need to write out the likelihood. We saw what to do in the last video. First, we write out the probability model using random variable notation. We covered this in section 1.3. I'll write this particular piece of code in the following way. First of all, I'll generate a random variable k. k will be 1 with probability p, 2 with probability 1 minus p. And then I'll let y be distributed as a normal random variable with parameters mu k and sigma k. Now we do some maths, some probability maths, to get the likelihood function for this random variable y. I won't go through the details of this calculation. We covered calculations of exactly this sort in section 1.5. Next step, we go ahead and fit the data set. We've derived the likelihood function for a single observation. Let's call it PR sub big Y of little y with all those parameters. And it's a generative model. We want to maximize the log likelihood of the entire data set, log likelihood of y1 up to yn. There's one thing which is a little bit tricky here, though. It wasn't st stated explicitly in the question, but if we look back at the code we wrote, the parameters we're trying to estimate, they're not free parameters. P has to be a probability for the code to work, so P has to be in the range 0 to 1. And sigma 1 and sigma 2 are standard deviations for normal random variables, so they have to be positive too. We know how to do this. We know how to optimize a function over constrained parameters. We covered it in section 1.2 of the course on numerical optimization. Here's what the code looks like. What this code is doing is it's optimizing over transformed variables. Here I'm using a softmax transform for p to make sure p stays in the right range. And I'm using the exponential transform for sigma to make sure that sigma 1 and sigma 2 stay in their right range. The likelihood function on line 5 is exactly the formula that we got from the last page. And this is a generative model for a data set. We need to fit the entire data set. We need to sum up the log likelihoods. And that's what I do on line 11. This code uses NumPy vectorized operations so that the log PR function automatically works happily over an array of Y values. That's why I've only got one call log PR of Y and it returns a whole vector which is then summed up. Now let's look at the final answer. Here's a histogram of the original data. I scaled it to make the total area of the histogram equal to 1, which makes it easy to compare it to a probability density function, which we know has to integrate to 1. Now, if we rescale the histogram in this way, it's called a density histogram. 
And the black line is the fitted likelihood function, i.e. the likelihood function for y. What we've been doing here is called generative modeling. It's called that because what we've achieved is a probability model that we can use to generate new random values. This is an example of what's called unsupervised learning as opposed to supervised learning where our data consists of input-output pairs. We want to model how the output depends on the input. That's what we'll study in the next video.